Hello, I'm Pastor Cordes from St. John Lutheran Church here in Lake City. Many of you are wondering, what about receiving Holy Communion during this COVID-19 shutdown? The short answer is, it may be a while before we're able to receive the sacrament. Holy Communion is intended to be done in groups. The larger, the better. But right now, it's important that we stay apart so as to keep from passing this virus to others. God wants us to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. I suspect you would feel terrible if you passed this infection on to others and their infection turned out to be serious. God wants us to obey our government and the state is trying to keep us safe right now by keeping us apart. For now, it's better to remember what the Holy Scriptures ask, as it teaches, what the Holy Scripture teaches about Holy Communion. Luther summarized the Bible's teachings nicely in his small catechism. He asks, what blessing do we receive from this eating and drinking? And he answers, that is shown us by these words, given and poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. He goes on to say, through these words we receive forgiveness of sins, life and salvation in this sacrament. For where there is forgiveness of sins, there is also life and salvation. So you can see, we believers rightly desire to receive Holy Communion. We want to be assured of God's full forgiveness because of Jesus. We want to be reminded that we have new life now and eternal life to come because of Jesus. We want to cling to God's promise of salvation through faith in Jesus. Holy Communion, of course, is not magic. It doesn't dispense these blessings like a vending machine but it does hold out to us the promises of God's word. And God's promises have the power to strengthen our faith. Okay, so that sounds more like several good reasons to come together for Holy Communion. We do want forgiveness, life, and salvation, all of which God gives us through Holy Communion. But remember, God gives these same blessings through Holy Baptism. If you received Christian baptism, you have forgiveness, life, and salvation through faith in Jesus. The same blessings that God gives through Holy Communion. And remember, God gives these same blessings through his word, which is how God empowers Holy Baptism and Holy Communion. If you listen to or read the Bible, you are feeding your faith and you have forgiveness, life, and salvation. The same blessings that God gives us through Holy Communion. So if you don't receive Holy Communion for a while because of a contagious virus, you are not being deprived of the blessings that God wants us to have through Holy Communion. You have them all already by baptism and by God's word. Ah, but now I hear some of you wondering, well, if we already have all the blessings of Holy Communion through God's word and baptism, why do we bother with Holy Communion? Okay, you might not have used the word bother, but you raised an important question. Here's why we still long to gather together for Holy Communion. First of all, we know that the one who washed us completely from all our sins by his cross, our Savior Jesus said, take and eat, take and drink. Holy Communion is something that Jesus wants his followers to do together Although he doesn't specify a frequency, the words as often as from the sentence, do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me, these words let us know that our Savior wants us to do this more often than seldom. It is good for us, to, for us believers to receive Holy Communion often. The Apostle Paul adds a second encouragement about coming together for Holy Communion. In 1 Corinthians 11, he writes, Whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. We believers love to proclaim Jesus' death on the cross as God's way of washing us clean of all sin. We want everyone to believe this as God's truth so that they can have eternal life in Jesus also. Maybe you didn't realize that you are proclaiming the Lord's death by coming to Holy Communion, but you are as your mouth silently receives Christ's body and blood, 
your actions are proclaiming, hey everyone, Jesus died for me, I'm fully forgiven, and it's all because of Jesus. That's why I'm sorry for all of my sin, and, and I'm actively working at turning away from everything God calls evil in the Bible. That is how you proclaim Christ's death as your Savior while silently receiving Holy Communion. But there's a third good reason for coming together for Holy Communion. The Apostle Paul also writes in 1 Corinthians, this time in chapter 10, Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. And so again, we see Holy Communion is intended to be done in groups. The larger, the better. Holy Communion is one of our most important ways of expressing our oneness, the fellowship, the unity that we individuals have in Christ. He has brought us together into his holy Christian church, the communion of saints. Think of all the believers who are already in heaven. Holy Communion reminds us that we are definitely connected to all of them. Think of all the believers who belong to other Christian denominations. We can't work together until we agree on what we're going to teach and stand for, but we are still very much united with all of them by faith in Christ. There's one God, the triune God. There's one Savior from sin, our Lord Jesus Christ. There's really only one church, the Holy Christian Church. Holy Communion unites us to all the believers that we can't see here on earth and also in heaven. But look what Holy Communion does for us when we can see each other. When you see fellow members of your church receiving Holy Communion, you can draw several conclusions about them. First of all, they also trust in Jesus as Savior like you do, or else they would not want his body and blood in them for the forgiveness of sins. A second thing, they also are sorry for all of their sins, or else they would have disqualified themselves when they examined themselves before eating of the body and drinking of the blood of Christ. I should say, before eating of, of Christ's body and blood along with the bread and wine. They also consider themselves connected to you. That's a third thing you can know about them. As members of the same family, God's family, they see themselves as connected to you. Or if we want to use the Apostle Paul's word body, they see themselves as a member of the same body as you belong to, Christ's body, the church, because everyone who eats of the bread is of one body. Paul talks about that as, as uh, everybody partakes of the one loaf. For us, we use the wafers. We can say, well, all those wafers came from the same batch of dough. And all the sips of wine come from the same vat of fermented grapes. So to take communion together is like saying, I'm accountable to all of you that I'm taking communion with. All of you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, we're in this together. So if you see me or hear me doing something that God labels sinful in the New Testament, I hereby give you my permission to hold me accountable. I would rather have you call my attention to my wrongdoing now than to let it lead me away from our Savior Jesus. That's really what we're saying when we take communion together. To receive Holy Communion in, as a group, in a group is like saying we are our brother's keepers and our sister's keepers. And that is why when this virus contagion has washed itself through the populace, I'm looking forward to having us all come back together for worship and for Holy Communion. But before that happens, some of you might come to appreciate attending worship at home on your schedule with a nice cup of coffee, still in your pajamas. To be honest, it's harder to, make a cooper to take a cooperative attitude about clearing out our Sunday morning schedule for nine o'clock worship, but the togetherness is worth it. I'm glad that technology has allowed us to broadcast our worship services through channel 18 and now also through our YouTube channel because there really are people in our church family who can't or shouldn't gather with others even when there is no virus to keep us apart. So now I want to talk to all of those uh, whose physical health or mental health or required work schedule actually prevents them 
from being present here in this worship area when it's time for the rest of the congregation to gather and come together. To all of you, I say, God bless you. Thanks for staying connected to your church family through these recorded services. And more importantly, thanks for staying connected to our Savior Jesus through his word. It might be through these services, it might be through your reading the Bible at home, but when you hear these services, you stay connected to Jesus and you keep up with what's going on here at church. For now, you definitely need to be separate from your church family here on earth. But when we all get to heaven because of Jesus, we will have an eternity of togetherness. It will be awesome. And now I want to address the whole congregation again. Let's be honest. The number of people who really cannot come together for worship when there is no virus is really quite a small number compared to all those who actually can come together for worship. Now is a good time for us to talk about this because it's vital for everyone to stay at home. I can just talk about attitude without singling anybody out. First, please know that if you claim Jesus as your Savior, I claim you as my sister in Christ or my brother in Christ. To me, you're a believer until you demonstrate otherwise. I know it's convenient to stay at home and just watch worship, especially now that we have our services on YouTube, uh, on our YouTube channel. You can dial in at any time, day or night, and watch the video. But flip things around and look at your staying home from the other side. What does that do? What does your staying home do to your brothers and sisters in Christ who did gather for worship? It's like if you threw a dinner party and you invited all your loved ones to your dinner party, but half of them asked you to fire up your computer's camera so they could just watch your dinner party from home. They're giving you attention for your dinner party, but it's not the same, is it? In this way, those who gather for worship actually feel your absence when they know you could be here and you chose to stay at home. It's like part of their body is missing. It's hard for them not to ask, well, what's wrong with us? Why won't they come and be with us? Did we wrong them? If we did wrong them, why won't they tell us so that we can make it right? See, they know that the Holy Spirit has put us all into the same church family, and they long for you to be here with them. Perhaps you think staying home is just a matter of personal preference or convenience, but it does have an effect on others. And as long as you claim membership at a church, you are not just an individual anymore. By your membership, you are continually binding yourself to that group, promising to love your church family, agreeing to build that family up with your presence and your smile and your profession of faith when we join together to say the creed and your singing as we worship the Lord with music. Right now, you must stay home because of the virus. But won't you take the time now to ask God to change your outlook for the sake of your church family who loves you and longs for you? First Peter chapter 2 says, Love the brotherhood of believers. Hebrews chapter 10 says, Let us consider how we may spur one another on to love and good deeds. Let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. Psalm 122 says, I rejoiced with those who said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. It's everywhere in the scriptures, this idea of coming together around God's word. It's a beautiful blessing from God. In my prayers for all of God's people, I ask for this very attitude. It will yield glory for God, and joy for God's people. So when this contagion is over, plan to be here in this house of the Lord again and again to worship with your church family and to receive Holy Communion together. Thanks for listening. God bless you abundantly. Peace in Jesus.